Good morning. Good morning. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'd like to hear everybody else hear you too. Okay. So you're the you're the authentic uh, guy. You're the real guy that was in Bachman Turner Overdrive, right? Eh? <laughs> yes. No. There's uh, there's, there's no a other guy we're trying to trace down right now in Austin, Texas, who's rung up a bunch of bills saying he's me, and there's two other guys in jail who said they're me, but you have the real me. Okay, all right. Well, the, you know, so this is a big honor, because I mean, I, I, I grew up listening to uh, the guests who, of course, and Bachman Turner Overdrive on a track, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not fragile. I'm one of my favorite albums. Um, taking Care of Business, great song. It dances. Every party has Taking Care of Business. It's kind of like a national institution, kind of like uh, Proud Mary and the whole bit. Yeah. Um, let me ask you first. Okay, you're going to Turtle Lake. You're going to be appearing there. Is the band? Uh, it's Rand, the Randy Bachman band, right now. Yes. Okay. Now, is the band going to uh, do the optional uh, thing, which is appear nude, or are you guys going to have to be fully oh, dressed? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think my hands might be nude. That's all. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I, yeah, I'm just curious because you, you you kind of wonder how many bands actually uh, participate with that. Have you ever done a, a nudist nudist thing like this before? No, and I didn't realize that this was the one. Oh, really? <laughs> you oh, only okay. just told me now I won't be showing up. Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of these festivals, when you're on stage, you look down there, most people are nude anyways. It's just not publicized. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. You, I, I got, a, you got a point there, because I never thought I mean, about most that. Most guys have their tops off. Most girls come and take them off in front of the stage yeah. or something. You know, it gives you a little thrill, something to keep going in the hot sun, you know. Yeah, yeah I never thought about that. You're right, because uh, that's most, to most concerts, the girls throw their things up there anyway so. yeah and they're shooting you know water out of these big fire water hoses and stuff and so uh, it'll be nothing new from you guys then right now yeah I, you've, you've never played there before then i take it no okay so that'd be cool it'll be a first T- tell me about your uh, your new album well it's only about three days out in canada and it's getting great reviews the first single has got uh, my buddy neil young on it with me it's called made in canada and it's doing great it's just been out a week and then we were the top most added aor last week and this week we're Sixty with a bullet in Canada, and we're just preparing now um, for the U.S. release, 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 which I hope will be really shortly. We've got three different labels kind of bidding and discussing releasing it on us, so you try to get the best deal, which is not necessarily the most money. You know, it's the best belief. You want a belief system. You want a, a, a really good team of people. So that'll happen real soon. Now it will be on America when? Do you know? No, I'd say in, a, in a, maybe a month or two. Okay. And any special songs we should look forward to uh, hearing in, here in America? Well, it's quite an unusual album. Um, you know how some times guys do a tribute album, like like Michael Bolton doing the suckiest, sickest love songs of all time. <laughs> you know that last album of his? Yeah, or, or Huey Lewis. Which wasn't news. bad, but it just meant the whole thing was just too much to take. And yeah. I thought, gee, I sh- I'd like to do a tribute album, but rather than say, you know, here's my truth of all my favorite rock tracks and have like Johnny B. Good and Brown Sugar and stuff like you that you already mentioned. Yeah. I thought, I had a whole bunch of original songs and usually in describing it with my band, I'd say, play this song like, you know, like Fire, like Jimi Hendrix and play this song like Brown Sugar because we don't read music. It's just I need to give them some sort of soundscape to copy. And when we started to do that, I thought, gee, I'll leave these songs. I'm using kind of classic riffs and grooves to set up these songs. I'm just going to leave them. So, consequently, what I have is an album that's quite diverse in the fact that it's got, it represents different sound styles and grooves from the 60s, 70s, and 80s with all original material. And I've had a lot of people call me and, and now asking me, is this song like Whiter Shade of Pale, or is this song like Roll On Down the Highway, or is this song like Taking Care of Business, or is this one like Your Love's Like a Hurricane, like Neil Young? So, truly, the Neil, song I'm doing with Neil Young is obviously a Neil Young kind of yeah. thing. We're playing like crazy horse. You know, we flew down there just a month ago and did this track called Made in Canada, and he was recording Crazy Horse at the time. We didn't even take our gear. We just used Crazy Horse's gear. It was all set up in his studio. Oh, really? So that's kind of the fun thing about the album. Uh, it ju- it's got reminiscences of, I mean, I think it's a great radio album. You can play a song on any format in the in the radio because it's kind of reminiscent of all the styles that have been rock radio in the last three decades. Now, when you're working with Neil Young, is this the, the, during the whole, for the whole album then? No, he just played on a track okay. called Made in Canada, which is quite incredible. Yeah. It's an up-tempo song, and it's about he and I growing up in Canada. And uh, he plays lead guitar with it and sings along with me, and it's one of those rare moments where he wouldn't let me do any overdubs, and it's live off the floor. And on the end of the song, which is a four-minute song, he tacks on about a five 
and a half minute blistering, blazing, sonic, bombastic guitar solo, which I just left, and people are really tripping on it over here in Canada. Just really, they just love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I had to edit it down to about four thirty to, to, to you know to have a radio cut, and then we put the long version on the album. But a lot of stations up here are playing the full long version. Now, how, how long is the full version? You said almost ten minutes. Ten minutes. Woo. That's a that's a that's a lot lot of lot of song. That'll be that'll be great. Now this, you, but you don't know when it's going to be released in America. But we'll, no, so we'll I'll be bring you, for I'll it. bring some this weekend. If you're there and I see you, I'll, I'll give you one. Oh, I wish I was there. I wish or I was going to be there. From your station. Yeah. Well, okay. Sunday from the station will be over there. Yeah, I guess, I've got I guess the our CD sport. Pro for radio, which is the short and long version. Okay. And then I'll just I'll bring you the album. You have the first copy of the album in America. Oh, really? It's only three days old. Here it came out this last Wednesday. I mean, you know, last Wednesday last week. So. It's only a few days old, so you'll have the first copy in uh, in Ca- in the states. Yeah, because I'll definitely play it on reminiscing. That'd, that'd be kind of cool on the FM side. Okay. Okay. Um, now, what were your, your favorite times? Was it d- during the time during uh, the Guess Who Bachman Turner Overdrive? What what was your favorite times as, as a band? Is it is it now? Can you... Well, man, you that's like saying what's my favorite. Song. I know, I know, I know. <clears throat> kind of an open question. There's but... so many favorite times that. Most people lived through, but I was there. Yeah. So, like, going to England in 67 with, with the early Guess Who was absolutely the most incredible time to go to England. Nobody had really broken worldwide, but they were, you know, all famous in my mind and just beginning. And, you know, when you go to a club, you'd see the Who, the Stones, the Yardbirds, Cream, Hendrix. I mean, everybody was just kind of starting then. Yeah. And it was a <clears throat> wonderful time. Then we came back from England after that to another great time with 68 and 69 in the States, and we were able to play all the pop festivals and, and, and not just witness the flower power hippie movement, but be there playing gigs at it. So my whole life's been one wonderful movie, so to speak, where I was kind of part of the soundtrack. And, it's, you know, it's basically rock music through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s in Canada and, and America and, this, and the world, actually. And there's so many favorite times, like doing festivals, where nobody really was a superstar yet, yeah. and playing on the same show with you know Zeppelin and Ten Years After and and Hendrix and Chuck Berry and Jerry Lewis and I was with either the Guess Who or BTO and and Frampton and the Doobie Brothers and and man it just it was an unbelievable time. Uh, it's like one big blur to me. It seems like a long weekend. It doesn't seem like <laughs> three decades. Yeah. Well, it, it had to be kind of kind of cool though to play with you to be with your brother too, as far as uh, with Bachman Turner Overdrive. How was that? Was that a kind of a? I mean, some brothers are, are rivals, and they have a lot of trouble, you know, working with each other. Did you guys have trouble working with each other? Or? Well, if you got any brothers, you know the answer to that yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I've got two sons, so I, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can see that with your two sons. They kind of there's this uh, unwritten law of how they get along and love each other because it's blood. Yeah. But when they disagree, and one's older than the other, there's this sibling kind of thing that goes on. But uh, like you're, you're right. I mean, it's really something to be around. I was the oldest brother and had two of them in early BTO. Mm-hmm. And so it's really something to be traveling the world. It's kind of like... Uh, oh, yeah, Tim, Tim and Robbie. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like you're a Boy Scout leader, and you've got scouts you know, with you who are you know, a few years younger, and you're taking them into the wilderness or the woods. And like we'd go to Tokyo or Germany or England, and, and they were like totally just right out of high school. I had already been there with a guess who, so I was kind of like the tour guide, so to speak. <laughs> and I kind of tell them where to go, what to do, and kind of like had been there before. Yeah. But it's really fun to share it with somebody that you're that close to. Because when you go home, or when you write home, you cannot put it into words. There's some things that just have to be f- experienced with your whole mind and body and soul, and they were there experiencing it with me, and it, it's great to share it with them. Okay, uh, Ra- Randy, as far as uh, now with you being with the Guess Who and uh, being with the uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, now it's the Randy Bachman Band, you're going to be doing... All the songs that you wrote while while with the Guess Who and Bachman Turner Overdrive, or yes, all? when people come to see uh, me and my band, it's kind of like um, a trip back through the late '60s and all through the '70s. And uh, I think my main gift that I've been given uh, in life is as a songwriter. So I feel I'm really proud to play all the songs. So people, when they come out there, they'll be hearing. Uh, no Sugar Tonight, These Eyes, She's Ooh. Come Undone, No Time, American Woman, uh, Laughing. I see uh, you wrote all the good ones. <laughs> Let It Ride, Taking Care of Business, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, Hey You, 
<laughs> taking care. I already said the. Uh, no, not not fragile. Did you write that? Looking one? out for number one. I mean, they're just. Yeah. And then I do some stuff for my new album. So it's kind of a a really great mixture of new and old stuff. And my new band plays it with real verve and energy, and it, they sound very close. I think we sound closer to the original records than some of the bands that are out there now touring as the Guess Who and maybe as BTO. Yeah, it's, it's good you got a band together because, I mean, there's actually people out there like Casey, uh, Casey from the Sunshine Band yeah. actually going out there doing stuff with karaoke. I mean, you know, it's just, it's that's kind of sad, you know. So No, my band really rocks. That's great. That's great. The question I want to ask you, now, there was a, I was told something that uh, when you guys first started touring as Bachman Turner Overdrive, you were just known as Bachman Turner. Yeah. You added the overdrive on. What what made you add the overdrive? Well, you know, we wanted a name, and the record label suggested I use my name because it was recognizable from being, you know, under the Guess Who songs and in the Guess right. Who. Right. And there were three Backmans and a Turner, so we called ourselves Backman Turner. But that was the era of Seals and Cross and Brewer and Shipley, which were two guys that showed up with a mandolin and a flute, and the right. other two showed up with acoustic guitars. Yeah. and played what in those days were called coffee houses, these little places that held 150 or 180 people with little round tables, and they sipped coffee out of these little tiny vessels. I don't know what they're called, <laughs> little mugs. And so we would be booked in these things, and we'd be setting up, and the guy would say, what's all this gear? And he'd think we were supposed to be there with two acoustic guitars. He thought it was two guys, you know, Bachman and a Turner. Yeah. And... Uh, and I'd even say to him, this is not Brewer and Shipley or, or Seals and Cross. And we'd set up and just blast and would actually be blowing these little vessels, these little cups <laughs> off the table. And um, after, you know, being fired three or four times in a row, our record label said, you need something to show that you're playing this heavy music because everybody thinks you're a folk act. And we were in, I think, Windsor, Ontario or Detroit. You know, it's like Twin Cities. They're on the border. Right. And we were crossing. So I'm not sure which side of the, of the border it was on, but we went into a truck stop. Actually, I think it was in Detroit. And we were paying our bill. It was late at night, 2 or 3 in the morning, and we had done a gig, and we were driving to the next gig. And, I, and in this truck stop, I saw a trucker's magazine called Overdrive right at the cash register. And I picked it up and looked at it and said, this is really cool. And the book <laughs> fell open at the middle, like where there's normal, like, normally like a Playboy centerfold, and it was a big centerfold, and it was a guy in his truck showing the chrome wheels and t leopard skin inside and his stereo, and he had a little television set and everything. I thought, well, this book, this name, Overdrive, is really cool. This is a cool book. And I said, this would be a great title for an album. And Turner looked at me and said, no, it's a great title for our band. Okay. And I called the label the next day, and I wrote this down on a napkin. You know those tall napkins? That, they're in those tall chrome things that are in the, in the yeah. uh, restaurant. Yeah. And I wrote down Bachman. And under it, I wrote down Turner. And under that, I wrote down Overdrive. Because there wasn't room to turn the napkin sideways on this little counter with a cash register and all the books. So I phoned the label the next morning and said, I've got a name, it's great, it tells you what the music's like, it's Overdrive, so we're going to be called Bachman Turner Overdrive. And they said, that's the longest name in show business, nobody will ever remember it, it's ridiculous. And I said, well, how about BTO, because it was right there, one under the <laughs> other on this napkin. And they said, well, that's pretty good. And I said, well, we want to use both. And they said, well, as long as you've got a short firm, uh, short form named uh, uh, initials, because then Chicago was CTA, Chicago Transit Authority, they were calling Crosby, Stills, and Nash, CSNN. Right. So when I came in with BTO, they said, that's, that's absolutely perfect. So we put out our first album with BT, Backward Turn Overdrive, written in long form around it, then our Overdrive gear, and in the middle we put BTO, and, then, and suddenly it became a worldwide recognizable logo. So we were very fortunate that all those things fell into place. You know, I, I remember that, too, on some of the, on some of the albums. You had, uh, like, big gears on the albums and stuff with the, with the, uh, the, the, the BTO on there. Right, that was our yeah. first album. That really set up kind of the gear. We got a Ferrari overdrive gear and, a, and an overdrive gear for some big cement truck. And they were actual gears that we had. And uh, we just laid them down and sprayed them silver, you know, on a silver background. And we carved a B and a T and an O out of wood. Oh, yeah? And laid it all down and had it photographed the proper lighting. It looked like the whole thing was forged out of this, you know, incredible metal and stuff. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, it fooled me, that's for sure. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Of course, then again, when I had it, it was on an A-track, so it was kind of small. But, uh, you know, that, the, the incredible days of the A-tracks, too. So, you know, anyway, I really appreciate talking to you. Uh, is there anything special you want, you want to tell us? I mean, you told us about your album. Um, you're going to be doing, of course, you said all the, uh, the big hits that you'll be doing as far as with Bachman Turn Overdrive and the Guess Who. Um, what, do you th what do you think the uh, people should expect besides uh, the band not being nude uh, at the uh, Turtle Lake concert? 
Uh, I think we're doing probably about a 75-minute set, and uh, I could just I could honestly say that it's truly uh, seven, it's for for us it's a total amount of fun, and to see the people's reaction to all of these songs, and I'm a very proud songwriter. These are like my children, so for me to play these songs and the people react to them. Uh, it's it's a wonderful experience. That's why I still enjoy going out and playing. My band really, really rocks, and they're going to have an unbelievable rock in time. The whole show looks like a really great uh, um, Lineup, afternoon yeah. and evening. It looks like a really good, fun time, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, you're going to be there with the Marshall Tucker Band in a few yeah. hours. Yeah. It's going to be great. I, I hope I'll be seeing a lot of old friends on that uh, show. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you will, and I wish, man, I wish I could be there. <laughs> I wish I could be there. Well, thank you, sir, very much for talking with me. Thank you. I'll bring you some copies of the album. It's a big, big honor for me because, like I said, I was a big, big Guess Who fan and an even larger uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive fan. So, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, and, and great success with.